Welcome to our first ever session of Office Hours with Productive. Um, my name is Luca from the Customer Success Team, uh, and I'll be your uh, guide for today. Um, so today, while we wait for everyone to gather, uh, let me just give you a brief overview. So uh, as I said, my name is Luca. You might have talked to me in the past. If not, you might have chatted to some of my other colleagues from the uh, success team. Um, today is our first session of Office Hours. Uh, and the general goal behind office hours is to give you a brief rundown or explanation of how certain things work in productive, what are some best practices, and so on. Um, today is the first of the first such office hours, and the topic today is time off. So we'll be discussing how to handle time off, uh, as well as some additional features that are related to time off in productive events. Um, to start things off, we might point out what is the goal of actually managing time off in productive, like what do we get out of it? And we can actually highlight three separate elements here. Number one is to make sure that everybody has the appropriate time entitlement time in productive, right? So that if you know if you have an annual allocation of 20 days for your vacations, the productive reflect or reflect this. And that people are, you know, that people book time up to this limit and not. Um, the second good uh, goal here would be to make sure that these entitlements, these allocations are internally communicated properly, right? So both to the individuals, like I want to know that I have 10 more days of vacation that I have to use up until the end of the year. But it's also information that's useful for my manager. For example, if he knows that, you know, uh, we have one more month in this in this year and his entire team has another three weeks of vacation to use up he, he knows that probably some projects will need to be delayed uh, because of this unused time off and the third point is quite simply to align our time off periods with our project work right so if we are set to uh if i'm booked to work 160 hours next month on a specific project and i book time off next month uh, clearly, I cannot do both time off and project work, so we want to reschedule work and see how we can best accommodate it. So those are just like the general reasons why we would use time off in productive, why we want to use it in productive. The good thing here is that productive actually you know, houses all of your project work information, hopefully. So time off slots alongside it fairly neatly and lets you get a really neat overview of everything in one place. So what I want to do is I want to briefly take you through the general um, setup of things in productive in terms of time off. So what I'll do here is I'll share my screen here uh, and we'll get started. So uh, everything starts in general with uh, setting up our time off categories, right? We can't get anywhere without that first. So what we want to do first is go to settings and go to time off. In time off, you want to, first up, you want to tick this allow time of booking. So turn it on. And I would generally suggest you turn on time off approvals. Oh, by the way, I hadn't mentioned it before. Uh, we will, so I will first give you a breakdown of how things work. And then at the end, uh, we'll go through some of your questions, uh, you know, specifics of your processes and the like that you might have. But yeah, uh, I would generally suggest you turn on time of approval as well. This is something that we'll be covering more uh, later. Uh, beneath this, we have our time of categories. So you see, I have like five or six of them here. And if I want to create a new time of category, I would simply click here. And we can create a time of category called annual leave. So I'll create my time of category called annual leave. I'll choose an icon and a color for it. Let's say this light blue with a coffee. Uh, now, the things that I want to set up in regards to this time off are the following pieces of information. First up, whether it is paid or unpaid. So if it is an unpaid time off category, then it's assuming that I'm not paying my uh, colleague, my staff member for their time off, right? If it is paid, then this is a way for the cost of this time off to actually enter the system via overhead and be logged there. In general, annual leave is paid, so we'll leave it as paid here. The second point here is whether the time off category is 
limited or unlimited. If it is unlimited, this simply means that the person can book any number of any amount of time off that they want. Whereas if it is limited, then we will need to give them a specific entitlement, also called allocation. In our case, we will choose limited here. Next up, we want to choose whether the time of category is set up in hours or in days. Generally, you will choose days uh, for most time of categories, but you can also choose hours for those specific events when you want people to be able to book per hour for whole days. With that said, if we set it up as days, we also have the option to set it up as full days or half days. In this case, I'll choose full day. Uh, you know, this sim quite simply relates to the capacity of the person in a given day, right? So if the person has eight hours or let's say six hours of availability in a given day, this will take away six hours of time. This will take away naturally three hours of time. We can put in a short description and I would generally suggest that you turn on the status sync so that you can sync the time of information about this category to Slack and to external calendars. Once all of that is set up, we'll click Save Category. In my case, I will choose Cancel, quite simply because I already have a time of category like this created here. All right. Now, once we have this time of category set up, one or more of them, the next step that we want to do is we want to create our, our entitlement, also called allocations. So what I want to do here in general is go over to Settings, go to Users, and find the person in the system that I want to add an entitlement to. In this case, I'll choose myself. I'll go to the Time Off tab here. And first up, the first thing that you'll notice here is that you have a separate tab for limited time of categories and a separate tab for unlimited time of categories. In our case, we're interested in the limited part, of course, since annual leave is a limited time of category. And we'll choose here to add a new allocation. So we'll choose annual leave. Let's say it's 20 days. And let's say that the start date here is the 1st of January 2024. And the end is the 31st of December 2024. And that's all perfectly fine. However, note one very frequent situation is that in some countries, in some companies, however you see it, it, you are generally allowed to use so-called old vacation days in the new year, right? So if this is the case in your country, in your company, what you want to do is you want to set at the end date here to the 30th of June next year. You don't want to, you want it to actually, you know, roll over or spill over into the next year. And of course, once the new year comes around, you will also be creating a new entitlement starting from the 1st of uh, January 2025. Once you're ready on that front, simply hit add allocation and you're good. In my case, I won't create it because I already have an allocation created for myself here. Now, in addition to setting up the entitlement or allocation that we see here, there is one final piece of information that we want to set up. And these are my time off approvals and time off notifications. So if we go back to our settings for a second here, you will remember that I instructed or you know suggested that time off approval is turned on. And if this is turned on, then we will see uh, that here we can actually set up approvers and notifiers. All right. So how does this work? Well, if we click edit, appro edit approvers here, we'll be able to set up a list of approvers and a list of person of people that are notified of the approved time off. In my case, let's say that Gary is our, I don't know, head of HR and he has to approve my time off. So I will choose Gary here as the approver. Note also that I can choose multiple approvers here, let's say Gary and Lucy. In this case, if this is something that I have set up, then both Gary and Lucy have to approve my time off. It's not either Gary or Lucy, it's both of them. However, in my case, what I'll do is I'll get rid of Lucy here and I'll put it in, put her in as the notified person. So this means that whenever my time off is approved here, Lucy will be notified about this. 
when we hit save here, Productive will ask me whether I want to add this setup to just to this one allocation or to all allocations. If I choose this option, then Productive will propagate this across the other time of categories, and they will all be the same. Once we're done with that, we're basically good here. Notice that here on this screen, so as we said, we have the limited and unlimited tabs. But under underneath the limited tab, we also have the list and the calendar uh, views. This view, as we'll see later, will quite simply tell me when a person has a book time off uh, within the calendar, or it will simply have a list of time of events here. We'll see that in a bit. So how does time off, uh, how does requesting time off work in productive? Well, it's quite, quite simple, really. So whenever a person wants to request time off, they will go to time and book time off. In here, they will choose a date range. For example, from the 23rd until the 27th of September, I'm going away. I, or actually, I want to go away. So I want to go away on an annual leave for five days. And my note is I'm going abroad. Uh, uh, abroad. Additionally, if I want, I can also choose to add an attachment here. Uh, I don't have to do this, but it's generally a good thing to do, for example, when you have uh, sick leaves to add doctor's notes and stuff like that. Uh, once we're all good here, we will simply say request time off, and that's it. It's a very simple process, and you will see that immediately we have a white uh, overlay here indicating that we have a pending time off event in this period. The same thing can be seen here in the list view because the time off event is pending and calendar view, same thing. That's basically it. That's the whole process of requesting time off from a staffer's uh, point of view. However, remember that we also turned on time off approvals, right? So this is still pending. So we actually want to approve this. How do we do that? Well, if we are a manager, we will simply mouse over this little approval screen here and click on time off. This is also where we'll see all of our time entries and expenses. Uh, but for now, for obvious reasons, we are interested in time off. So let's click here. And when I come to this screen, I will see, okay, I don't have any unapproved time off requests, which is interesting because, you know, um, I submitted one, so where did it go? Well, the thing is that on this screen, I'm not seeing my own time off requests. I'm seeing time off requests that I'm supposed to approve. And if you remember, Gary was the person that's supposed to approve my time off. So at the top under filters, if we, in addition to myself at Gary, we will see the time off event that I created. So once I'm here, let's say that I'm Gary at this point in time, I can approve time off, right? I can say, okay, Luca, Luca wants to go away for five days. Cool, let's click here and approve. However, bringing us back to the third point that we discussed initially to sync our time off time with our project time, we might wanna see, okay, do we actually have any work scheduled for Luca in this period? Do we need to move it around? What's going on? So in that case, what I wanna do is I wanna click here and select show in resourcing. And in here I see, okay, Luca is scheduled to work on the Sonic game up until the 20th and from the 30th onwards. So his annual request, uh, annual leave request here is actually perfectly fine because he's doing no project work at this point. All right. We can go back to here and approve the time off or even what we can do, we can go to show in resourcing, click on the, on the time off event and hit approve. Now, you'll notice something interesting here. Gary is the approver here, but I am the one that actually did the approval. This is because I'm an admin and I'm in this organization and I have the right to um, approve time off on behalf of other users. Permissions are something that we'll deal with, uh, with a, in a bit, uh, but just in general, rem remember that admins can approve time off on behalf of other people as, a, as like in general. 
a normal manager would only be able to approve time in the, uh, for themselves and not for other users. And that's basically it. So going from creating a time of category to creating an entitlement to submitting a request and approving the request, you have your whole time off flow here. With that said, there are a few advanced options that I would like us to take a look at now. First up is a feature that's reserved for our ultimate uh, plan, which uh, is the person status. So if we go here, and I'll actually get rid of this so you can see it a bit better. So if we go down to this dropdown, we have our status update uh, function here. In here, I can say, okay, so uh, I am currently away on vacation. Perfectly fine. So I can do it manually. However, if I turn this little thingy on here, what will happen is my uh, vacation time or my sick leave time will actually be synced directly from resources, right? In other words, when I'm away on vacation here, my status will update to vacation here. And this provides me with a neat little benefit of, for instance, somebody trying to ask me for help on a task, like, hey, Luca, can you help me? Oh, no, Luca's away on vacation. He can't help me. I need to find someone else, right? So it helps clear, It helps shed light on those situations where you know, you're know you pinging somebody on a task for three times. They're not responding. And on the fourth thing, you realize, okay, they've been away on vacation this whole time. That's one option. Now, the second thing is a lot of companies use Slack and Productive has a native Slack integration. So you can actually send the, the person status from productive to Slack. So you can, you, you can first send it from resourcing to the person status and then from the person status to Slack. This means that essentially when you are away on vacation or sick leave or whatever, you, it, it, even people that don't tag you in productive will know on Slack that you are away. How do we do this? Well, it's very simple. Go to settings and we go here to app marketplace. And in the app marketplace, we find Slack. We find the personal Slack integration. Click on it and hit connect app. So you can see here that right now Productive is asking me to, to, uh, to give it all of the appropriate permissions. I won't go through with the whole process, I'll hit cancel. But in essence, once I'm done with you know, uh, the, verif the, verif the user verification and connecting to my Slack workspace, Product will actually be able to send the information about my time off directly to Slack. Now, there is one other place where we generally want to send time off information, and that's to our calendars. So if we type in calendar here, we'll see a few options. Google Calendar, iCalendar, and Office 365 Calendar. In my case, I have a Google Calendar, so I'll use that. Now, the goal here is, once again, to send our time off information to our Google Calendar, so that anybody who has access to my calendar, whether it's a client with a calendar with a calendar app, or whether it's somebody internal who wants to check on my availability, they can actually see their hey Lucas away this week or however or whenever. Again, very simple flow. Simply hit connect calendar here. Choose your account. Log in. Like verify yourself and choose what uh, what information you are sending over to the Google Calendar. Once you're done, the information will have your out of office info uh, in the calendar. Hope that's clear. Next up, uh, I hope that we've showed so far that Productive's general time off handling is fairly simple, quick, elegant. Um, but there is one little snag here, and that is setting up entitlements. So when you're setting up entitlements for a single person like I did here, it's a fairly straightforward process. However, if you're in a company of some significant size, like I don't know, 20, 30, 50 or more people, it can be a bit bothersome to actually do this uh, for each individual. In these cases, what you generally want to do to help save some time and make sure that you know you um, you have all the data correctly inputted is to go to settings and data input. Once here, choose the download data import templates and choose entitlements. Download it and check it out. So it's a CSV file where you can input the name of the person, the email of the person. That's just to link the entitlement to the appropriate uh, user and productive. 
start date, end date, uh, time of category, and number of hours or days, right? So what you would generally do in these cases, in these cases, I mean, entitlements are generally uploaded on a yearly basis. So you would download the CSV, put in the appropriate information, import it back in. Next year, most likely it will be the same data. Maybe you've, you know, you've added a user or two or removed a few of them. Simply uh, adjust the data as appropriate, change the dates. So adjust the, date, uh, the data for the next year and import it again. This will save you a bit of time and it will make things the whole process quite a bit smoother. All right, next up, one thing that we touched upon briefly previously are custom permissions. Um, so, or actually I should say user permissions. So we said that, a man, that uh, an admin is able to approve time off for everyone here, right? If I were a manager, I wouldn't be able to see anybody else's time approvals uh, here. But there are some other things that you can also customize using custom permissions. So if we go, go again, once again, into settings, and we go to permission sets here, note that this is only reserved for, member, for people on the ultimate plan. Permissions, and you can see all of our, cust our, all of our system, so base uh, custom, uh, base roles here but we can choose to add a new permission set. The base will be, for example, manager. And if we scroll down alongside all of these others, other um, permissions that we have, we have time off bookings. So you have see here that the manager cannot approve time off for all users. But in my case, I might want to let them do that. So I can turn it on. One thing that I would point out in this list is this third option here, view notes and attachments on time of bookings for all users. If you have such an internal policy where folks are generally not privy to the information of why somebody is, for example, taking sick leave or having access to their attachments on their bookings and so on, you generally want to create permissions that have this turned off, right? If the information pertaining, if the information on these doctor's notes, booking, uh, time off bookings, and so on, is supposed to be private, then you want this turned off for most of your people. Um, and lastly, the last advanced option that I would like us to touch upon here is our our our, our HR integrations. So one thing that many companies do is they actually, you know, they handle their project work in productive, but they handle all of their HR stuff in another tool, in, an, in a specialized HR tool. And it's frequent that you want this information from these HR tools to actually be ported over into, uh, into productive, right? Because you, as we've mentioned previously, you want your time off events to uh, fit snugly alongside your project work. If this is something that you want, productive has you covered. We'll go once again into settings and we'll go here into our marketplace again. Under the marketplace, we will scroll down to the HR segment and we will see a list of all apps or all tools that Productive integrates with or plans to integrate with in the near future. Once we find a tool here that we are using or the tool that we are using, simply click on it and choose connect app. When you choose connect app, you will be taken to uh, once again a uh, verification screen where you'll be able to you know, log into Charlie and well, in this case Charlie and sync Charlie to productive. Once the two are synced, all approved time off events from Charlie will be synced into productive, right? That way you will get to you know, get to cake, get your cake and eat it too because you'll get to use your specialized HR tool but you'll also be able to get this information to productive without spending uh, uh, time and effort on doing this uh, in some manual way. I hope that's clear. Yeah, take a look through the available and upcoming uh, HR tools and let us know if you don't find yours here. Lastly, uh, the, the last point that we have on the agenda today is uh, some upcoming new features. So. Um, I'll, I'll repeat again. I think Productive's handling of time off is fairly straightforward and elegant. Uh, and we've made st steps to make sure that this is so. However, there is one final step that's missing 
that might be missing here. So if we go to our time off and we take a look at our approvers, right? So it's quite easy to set up an approver or approvers. So I want to go here and set up this structure in any way that I see fit. And it will, if I want to, also apply to other uh, time of categories. However, imagine that I'm, a, you know, again, a company of some significant size. I'm adding users fairly frequently. And every time I do, I have to set up one approval list and the notification list for annual leave, <coughs> one for half day and one for vacation. Maybe sometimes I forget to do it. Maybe sometimes I do it wrong. So it is something that we want to, to make even better and productive than it currently is. So how do we do this? Well, well, how we are planning to do this actually. So we go to project and let me just find my link here. All right. So what we are planning to, in, um, to uh, introduce here are so-called approval policies. So uh, what, how this will work is the following. In the time of settings, you, in addition to having time of categories, time of approval, you will have approval policies, right? So here we have a list of all of our approval policies, which we'll, we'll explain in a second. And here above, we have our default approval policy. In this case, it's general. So this one. So how do we set up an approval policy? Well, we want to say within an approval policy. For a person who has the general approval policy applied to them, for vacation, their approvers are their personal manager, Cameron, uh, Mer Marlene, Bob, and Joe, right? For sick leave, it's Cameron and Marlene again. So what we're doing here is we're effectively telling the system, whenever I create a new user, apply this general policy to them and apply this list of approvers to all of their time off, right? And these additional approval policies, we can always switch them to these if we want. But for each individual person, for example, for OB here, we see that, okay, they're assigned the general policy and they have all of their time off categories here and all of their approvers are, are already set up, right? So we had Fred, Cameron, Marlene, Bob, and Joan as the person to be notified. Uh, and that's basically it. If I want to change their approval policy, I will click here on edit and change it from general to one of the other approval policies that we have set up. Uh, this feature is coming out fairly soon. Uh, I hope, I'm hoping that this is clear to you and I'm hoping that uh, it will prove helpful to you and useful uh, in the future. Um, with that said, that kind of re gets us to the end of uh, the explanation or uh, workflow part of, uh, of this office hours. So we can actually move on to the questions uh, next.